Hi, my name's Dale, and welcome to Metal Tips and Tricks. We are right now in the process of step three of a build it, use it project I call DIY Spindle Square. In the first episode, I showed you how to build a spindle square. The second one, I showed you how to use it. And if you haven't seen the second one, there's some great surprises in there that I think you'll benefit from. So you need to go back and take a look at that one. This is now the third episode. We're gonna pimp this thing out and make it look cool. And my goal is to make this look more comfortable on a Harley motorcycle than it does on a Bridgeport milling machine. So we got quite a task ahead of us. The fourth episode, we're gonna build a really cool wood box for it to protect it, and we're gonna do it all on the milling machine. Very simple, very easy to do. But let's not jump too far forward. Let's get back to this. I love Art Deco design. I love the looks, especially the industrial look of the 20s, 30s, and 40s. And I wanna incorporate some of that design into this. We're gonna round off the corners, we're gonna add some pinstriping to it, but we need to do this in a machinist style. Like the pinstriping, we don't do pinstriping with a pinstriping brush in a machine shop. We do it on a milling machine. I wanna show you how I wanna do that here. I'm gonna head off camera right now. I'm gonna disassemble this whole, this whole setup and I'll be back in a few minutes and we'll start talking about the details of how we're gonna make this thing look cool. Okay, I'm back from disassembling it. It breaks down pretty easy, pretty quick. Like I said, I want to round these corners over kind of soften the look of this whole device. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a roundover bit. Now, I got a problem here. My bit is only quarter inch, and that's just not going to be adequate for what I want to do. And believe it or not, this is the only one I have, except I'm going to show you how to cheat. And this only works on aluminum, so please hear me, only use this on aluminum, the trick I'm going to show you, because if you use it on steel, well, it's risky. Even in aluminum, it's a little risky, but I've never had a problem, but I do warn you, if you don't feel comfortable with what I'm going to show you, please don't do it. I'm going to use router bits. I've used router bits on aluminum well before I even owned a milling machine. I would chuck a router bit into a, into a router and mill aluminum with it. And it works, I've never had a problem, I've never had a bit break. That doesn't say it won't happen, it just says it hasn't happened to me. You can buy a set of these really affordably at like Harbor Freight. Um, the shortcoming to this one is it's only got a quarter inch shaft. I would buy a set that has a half inch shaft. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up so it's gonna cut our corners for us. Very cool, actually, this is the side we want. This is our top, this is our side. The other thing we need to do is we need to be able to coordinate this so when we cut this corner, we can just flip this over, cut this one, turn the whole thing around, cut, flip, cut, and we're gonna incorporate a stop. And it's very important when you set up the stop for this particular operation is that the stop comes in dead center right here. And the reason you want that is when we start rounding these over, if it's up too high or too far to the left or to the right, you're not gonna get an accurate lineup and you're gonna get very frustrated. So remember, this needs to be lined up dead center. So I'm gonna start getting this going. This isn't gonna be rocket science. You're gonna be surprised how quick it goes. We're gonna tap this into place. See if our, nope, oh, not quite yet. There we go. You know if you're flat, if your parallel's inside, don't move around. Tighten it up. Pull this back. And we are going to install the router bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch off this corner here right on top of my material.
going to raise the table into it. Now if you'll notice, I've got the setup where I'm cutting on this end instead of the other end. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm doing it for the camera angle. I would prefer my chips when they come off of this piece to shoot back to the wall instead of out to me. But I'm setting this up for you guys so you can see it easier. So right there we're going to set up a little more. And I'm literally just trying to get that corner just a little bit past. See if we're going to scrape a little bit. Okay, we're scraping right there. I'm going to back this off a couple thousandths. Now remember, take your handle off, turn it around. And the reason you want to do that is the weight of the handle through the vibrations can rotate and lower your table and mess everything up. Now I've already got our stop set up. Now I'm going to come in. And once this is all set up, I'm just going to be able to rotate and move this thing around. So let's get going. Now I'm seeing I'm hitting just a little bit more than I want on top. So I'm going to back it down another thousandths. Turn my handle around. Bring it in. And what's great is when the ball bearing stops moving, that's my hero position. I'm going to back it up just a little bit. I'm going to come over here to the DRO, the digital readout, zero it. Bring it in, and I'm going to make this in one cut. Come into zero, oh, went minus, back it up a little bit. Bring it in. Perfect. And let's make a cut. And now since it's aluminum, I'm going to go back, cut, there we go, shut it off, rotate. Now we want to look for burrs, make sure they're not going to interrupt in us. Turn this over, tighten it down, tap, 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 see if our, nope, that's good. So our parallels didn't move. Nothing moved, we're just going to come in, do it again. Now we've got some burrs on there. Remember when I talked about setting up this probe? This is why the probe has to be dead center here. If it's up too high, it's going to cause us a problem because the uh, stop is not going to be in the right location. Deburr a little bit here. So now here, we need to remember to keep our orientation, we don't want to flip it this way. So just double check, you know, make sure we're getting it set up right. Get a brush in here. We are relying on the accuracy of the machine to hold everything in the right place.
rinse and repeat. Oh. Now, this is one inch square stock, and the round over on here, this is a half inch radius, which seems to just line up just right for this project. But remember, this is your art project now. You do it how you want to do it. And I would actually love to have you guys send me some photographs of what you've done. Here's the email address that you can send it to me. And if you get it to me quick enough, I'll put it on the next video when we build the box. There we go, pretty nice. I know there's a little flat spot there. When we polish this out, you'll see that pretty much just goes away. Let's do a little deburring on it. Now at this point, we don't need to remove this stop. We're gonna just keep it in the same position. Remember, you've got it lined up this way and you've got it lined up this way, very important. All right, I'm going to change out bits. So the first thing I've put in here is an edge finder because we want to find out exactly where the center of our workpiece is. Go over to the DRO, zero it. And we know this is 200 thousandths, so we're going to move this in 100 thousandths. Actually, it's funny, I'm going to the dial, I don't need to. We're going to move in 100 thousandths. So now we're in the center. Now, I'm kind of doing it more in an educational way for you guys. Normally, I just crank it over to exactly where I need to go. But just to make it a little easier for you guys to understand what I'm doing, is I've centered up my... Uh, edge finder to where the center of this whole column is lined up now on the edge and we've got a one inch piece of aluminum so we're going to bring this over 500 thousandths. There we go, lock the table and now we're in the center. Oh, you know something? I just forgot. What we're going to do here is we're going to make three stripes and we're going to mill it in. And I need to first mark out how I want to do this. We're going to put some dicom on here. Some marking dye. Nice pretty red blood color. And while that's drying, I'm going to switch out to this eighth inch bit. Of course, it's, it's a ball end bit. Don't know how well this one's going to work. I just picked it up at a flea market. It feels kind of sharp, but we're not cutting that much. It'll be a fun bit to, uh, to play with. We'll see how it uh, carries out at the end. Let's see, how's our deck I'm doing? Okay, it's good and dry now, it looks like. So like I said, we are going to put three stripes in here. And I don't want them all to terminate at exactly the same spot. It's going to be one in the center that's going to terminate you know, back a little bit. Then there's going to be one on the top and one on the bottom. And those two are going to terminate at the exact same spot. So let's kind of come over to this side. I'm going to come in for the center one, half inch. half inch, half 
half inch. For the next two, move this in a three quarter inch. Uh, we'll fudge it a little bit further. In a minute here, you're going to see why I'm doing this. Excellent. Now that we do have everything already lined up, we're golden right here. Well, there we go. Now we know we're in the center. We're going to line this up so it stops just right on that center line. I'm going to bring the table up and I'm just going to touch off right there. I'm going to center my dial, set my dial to zero. So this is an eighth inch bit. How deep you go, you know, you can go sixteenth, you can go an eighth inch. Since this is a ball end bit, I think we'll go down a full eighth inch. So we're going to go down to 125. And what's fun about this, we got a small bit in there. I've got the speed cranked way up. So I just went in 70 thousandths. It looks like a real nice depth. <laughs> Something's not tight here. Let me, uh, something either not tight or not parallel. Let's find out. We're tight there. We look parallel. Oh, here we go. I didn't lock this shaft down. Let's back it up. Bring it down to set. Lock the shaft next time, guys. I'm going to bring this up, take some relief off of it, start it up. Bring it back down to 70,000. Move the handle. Well, obviously not my lucky day. Let me go find another cutter. I don't know if I have another ball in like this. Um, like I said, I picked this up at a swap meet, paid, you know, probably 10 cents for it, and definitely a dull bit. So let me uh, go find another one. After our little accident, we're going to have to start over. I'm going to go to a larger bit. That one was an eighth inch. This one's going to be 3 sixteenths. I just decided, well, Let's not push luck. Let's go to a lot thicker bit. Um, the challenge anytime you're using a small cutter like that, when you're used to using large ones, half inch and above especially, well, you're used to just cranking through it and you forget that on a smaller bit that you just can't crank through it. And when the bit is also incredibly dull, well, you've got some problems. I, uh, well, Let's just say that the um, burr here is nasty. So um, I'm going to crank this in, do the same thing as we did before. I'm going to line this up. Tighten the quill down. See how we're doing. I'm going to bring this in just so we touch. Okay, we're touching, zero this out, and just like I did with the other bit, I did a depth that was 70 thousandths of an inch. 
And that's what we're going to do here. Turn it on. Go in 70,000. And we're going to take our time turning the handle this time. Coming up to our little line right now. Good. I don't want to do that. We're going to lower our table. Nice cut. We're going to turn this over. Now remember, the accuracies are already in place on this. Everything's already lined up. We don't have to think much. We just turn it over, tap it down. Come up to the surface. We're going to come to zero on our base. Now we're going to go our full depth of 70 thousandths. I set up marks on my material. You could very well have set up the DRO to have your where your start points are. Another cool way of doing it is you can set up your handles, your dials. You can set this one up to zero for this side, crank that one over, set it for zero for this side, and have repeatability. Now we're going to go in to this next area here. We um. You know, it's, I can use math to figure this out, where the center is right here. I think I'm just going to have some fun. Let's unlock the table, move it over, study it a little bit. Now well, let's do this. Let's go, I'm going to look at the DRO a little bit, see how it comes out also. That's our magic number. Lock the table. I'm going to go to a different depth on this one. I'm going to pr crank our table to zero. And I'm going to take this one in. Well, that one was at 70. Let's go um, 0 0.045. Okay, we're going to flip this around. Actually, let me brush it off. It's nicer to brush it off at this point. It's easier to get the chips out of the way. See how I did that? Just rotate 180 degrees. Look for our red line. Start it up, bring it to zero. Okay, we're going to go to 45.
Pretty cool. Now we're just going to flip it over, rinse, and repeat. Remember, we're trusting the machine to hold the accuracies that we've already set up. Go in 4.5, move it over. Okay, let's take the piece out and take a look at it, see how we did. I think that looks really cool. It's a nice finish. Look at that finish inside. Beautiful. But now I know you guys are saying, Dale, this doesn't look like it belongs on a Harley. It looks like it belongs more like on a little trike with a little pink basket on the front. Well, you're right. The next thing is we need to polish this up, give it a shine. I'm going to do that off camera, bring it back to you guys here in just a minute so you can see what's going on. The reason I'm not going to show you the polishing process is I actually don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to go to work on it and find out what happens. Here it is, the pimped out spindle square. I think it looks very cool. Um, I'm not going to put this on my Harley. And there's a real good reason for that. And I, I know some of you are going, well, that's, I wouldn't put that on my Harley. Well, the reason I'm not going to put it on my Harley, well, I don't own a Harley. <laughs> I don't own any type of motorcycle. And if I were to put it on my old Land Rover, well, <laughs> this would be the shiniest thing on that Land Rover, so it probably wouldn't fit there. But this has been a fun project. Remember, this is uh, part three of the spindle square. The next one is we're going to build a really a cool box for it. Now, I know I'm going to get some, some people that are going to criticize me on, oh, that's stupid. Why would you do that? Well, I'm going to ask you to put your money where your mouth is. Send me a photograph of one that you did that looks better. And I'd love to actually see it. And anybody else, I want to see what you've done. In the next, you know, I'm going to be shooting the next episode pretty soon, though. Um, I'd like to see what other people have pimped these out at, and I'll put, if, if it's in time, I will take photographs of yours and put them on the next video. So let's see what happens there. Very, very cool gauge. I hope you've enjoyed uh, part three. Remember, we got part four to go. Back up just a minute. So I'm going to give a, I'm going to give this spindle square away on the next video. And what I'm going to do, at the end of the next video, part four, when we build the box for this, I'm going to have an email address where you can send in an email and I'll put you on the raffle to win the spindle square. And it's going to be held about two weeks after the next video. And at the end of that video, I'll give you all the descriptions of how you can participate in the free giveaway of the, sp of the spindle square. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Till next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. Just like I did with the other bit, is I did a depth of a thousand, uh, seventy thousand. I did a depth of that, 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 that. I did a depth that was a lot. I did a depth that was um, somewhat deeper than it was. <laughs>